Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. I have been solving math problems out of this book here, practicing to take the GRE general test, the 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 265, quantitative comparison question number 3. Let's take a look at it. After I get done doing number 3, and in case you're wondering what, uh, what it is that I'm doing here, what, what in the world is this guy doing, in case you're wondering, go back and watch uh, the clip for question number 1, and you, will, you might learn something out of it. 5 over 8 versus 7 over 11. I'm going to do these questions in, it's not a very difficult question obviously, it's a very simple question, out of, out of 15 questions this is only number 3. 80% of the people got this question right, but then again, that raises the question as to why 20% missed it. One out of five people missed it. And though, and, and my, my gut feeling is that the vast majority of the people, the 20% that, uh, that missed it, uh, are probably sitting there and doing it out actually, dividing 5 by 8 and 7 by 11. And even those who got it right, they're probably doing it this way, some of them. So I'm going to show you two, way, two ways, rather. Uh, one is a little bit more orthodox, more traditional, more conventional method, and then I'm going to show you a little bit unconventional way. There are always two ways of taking the exam. One is one is what I call the traditional way, the orthodox way, the, the conventional way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the proper way, the academic way, and then the other one is the quick and dirty way. So let me do the traditional way first. In the traditional method that you that you were taught uh, when you were a little schoolboy or schoolgirl, you were told that uh, uh, you are to you are to take what is known as uh, common denominator. The common denominator here of course would be 88. So you take you take 88 as a common denominator and 88 goes into 8 11 times so this becomes 5 times 11 and then 88 goes into 11 8 times so this becomes 7 times 8 and of course you compare the two quantities of which one is bigger 5 times 11 or 7 times 8. That's all. I'm going to do the same exact thing, nothing earth shattering, I'm going to do the same exact thing but I'm going to avoid this extra step of having to write this common denominator at the bottom. What you do is, you take the bottom of this guy, multiply it by type of this guy, 8 times 7, you see? 8 times 7, this times that, that goes, comes in this column, and then you always start from the bottom, go to the top, 11 times 5, that goes here. As you can see, you have the same thing, except I didn't waste my time writing out the common denominator. So 11 times 5 is very simple, 55. What is 8 times 7? 7 times 7 I know is 49. 49 plus 7 is going to be 56. Since this is 56, this is 55, this quantity is bigger. This guy is bigger. The answer is B. That's all. The answer is B. Because this turns out to be 56, as you can see. And this turns out to be this. Let me do one quick one. Very, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make it up at the, on a, the spur of the moment. Let's say, for example, if you ask me to compare uh, six over seven versus seven over eight, which one is bigger? Well, it's very simple. Seven times seven is forty-nine, and six times eight is forty-eight. So this guy is bigger. That's all. You don't have to waste your time actually doing it all out. Which one is bigger here? Five over eleven or? Uh, six, uh, 6 over 13. I don't know. Let's find out. 13 times 5 is 65. And 11 times 6 is 66. So this guy is bigger. That's all. Let's look at the uh, next one, number, number 4. Enough of this. I'm going to erase this part here. We're going to move number 4 now. Let me see what time I have. Well, I have already taken close to five minutes so far, so let's wrap it up. Number four. I need to raise this as well.
MN is a line, this is 40 degrees we are told. Here's another one. This is B. This we are told is 55 degrees. Q and R. And finally, S to T. This is Y degree. This is X degree. Everything is there for a reason. So, question simply is which one is bigger? This quantity, y minus x or 15? Let's take a look at it. Let's change the color. The very first thing that we should notice is at the very bottom of the picture, they tell you that mn, this line mn, is parallel to pq. If this line MN is parallel to PQ, then this angle has to be equal to this angle. That tells me that if this angle is 40, then this angle also has to be 40. So that takes care of that part. Then they go on to tell us, then they go on to tell us that, well, let's stop for a second here. So if this is 40, if this angle is 40, this we know is 50. 40 plus 50 plus x, 40 plus 50, or rather 55, plus x has to be 180 because it's a straight line. This angle plus this angle plus this angle makes 180 degrees, like this. 40 plus 55 plus x is 180 degrees. We can figure out what x must be. 40 plus 50 is 90. Had this been 50, the x would have been 90 as well because 90 plus 90 is 180. So x has to be 85. Your x is 85. Let's put it here somewhere. If x is 85, then this angle here also is 85. So then how much must y be? Well, then y plus 85 is 180, this right here, y plus 85 is 180, so then y must be 180 minus 85. 180 minus 85, 180 minus 80 is 100, so 180 minus 85 would be 95. Let's put it here, 95, and your x was 85, which is 10, and of course that is smaller than 50. The answer is B. That's all. Hold on just one second. That's all there was. There's not much in it actually. You just have to understand the concept of parallel line and so forth and uh, go from there. A very straightforward, simple question. Number 4 on a scale of 1 through 15. 76% of the people who took this exam, this particular exam when it was given, got this question right. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring or online tutoring or if you wish to buy the solution manuals to these questions, for any of these reasons, if you need to get hold of me, go to my website at www.prepprepgre.com and send me an email, okay? And we'll talk. Thank you.